So I've been sending this product in for about eight months. And um, every time I get it, it flies off the shelf. Um, no problems at all. Been sending it in FBA. And, um, and I've probably made uh, between 15 and 17,000 uh, just off of this product. Um, I mean, I've sold between 15 and 17,000. So Amazon has been selling it, no problem. Well, I just found a boatload of it a couple of days ago. Uh, and I shared this on the uh, last precast. I'm gonna show it here in a second. And, um, and so I sent some in actually on Monday. Um, it started selling right away, sent some in Tuesday, selling right away. And then I went to list it again, uh, forget, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, and I got the hazmat warning. So, I've been back and forth with Amazon, you know, like what's going on. And uh, basically they've come back and they said that the item is hazmat. And so I can't sell it through FBA anymore. So what's new to me, I've only been selling for a year, is that when you have, a, when you have an item in the warehouse that's hazmat that you've sent in, they don't, they don't return it. So basically, it's kind of like if you ever watched Monsters, Inc., uh, when, when the child touches one of the monsters, all of a sudden you see this, like, um, emergency hazmat crew come out. Well, apparently that's what happens with uh, any product that they deem as hazmat. Because in the email, it stated that they won't send it back, but they call in a special team uh, that comes in and, and deals with it. So luckily... I only had about six, between 600 and $650 worth of what I paid for the product in there. Um, and then they're going to charge me, of course, the disposal fees, you know, to get rid of it. So it's going to be about a $700 learning um, experience for me. I'm actually happy about that, though, because as I get more and more into FBA, I'm going to be sending in a lot more of uh, things that could potentially be hazmat. So now I know that I have to be careful about what I send in. So if you watched the last precast I did, you know what the item is. They are meals. Um, I'm sure you've seen these in grocery stores before. Let me try to adjust my light here. So that this is the... Uh, this is the, yes, I can still, um, I can still merchant fulfill them, but these, this is the product meal craft makes it, um, you know, it's a pretty common product. You can, you can see in most grocery stores. Um, so like I said, I've been sending this in for eight months and it's been flying off the shelves. No problem. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, I discover that it's hazmat, and so I can no longer send it in. The good thing is I have been merchant fulfilling them. So as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as I saw, as soon as I hit the, uh, you know, send button and the hazmat came up, I ran out the door because the UPS man had just pulled up. So I ran out the door. He was pulling out of my driveway. I flagged him down, and I pulled off the boxes that had meals in them and brought them back into my office. So luckily I, I saved a couple hundred dollars there. Um, and now I have them, you know, sitting in my office and they are, they are selling. I, I've been selling on average about four 12 packs a day, uh, merchant fulfilled. So it's definitely a product that Amazon customers uh, seem to want and like. Um, but the reason why I'm doing this precast is because I know a lot of you are doing grocery as well, um, as well as HBA and other things. So, um, you know, those of you who are veteran sellers, you probably already know this. You know, just make sure what you're sending in is not hazmat. But here's the question I have. And again, if any of you want to come on camera and, and would like to share any of your experiences, please come on. Um, just click the uh, camera button. Um, what's weird is when, you, when you're sending in a replenishable product like that, and it's been coming in for a while, 
Um, and how are you really supposed to know uh, other than I guess you're supposed to do the MSDS um, sheets and send those in ahead of time um, to make sure that that product's not hazmat. So I don't know if any of you in the chat room you know, know what to do. Do you do that on an item where you're going to go deep on? Uh, do you always make sure that it's clear of hazmat, even if you've been sending it in for a while? Because that's what kind of took me back. I thought because I had been sending it in for eight months that it wasn't going to be a problem. So Shirley asked, uh, what is an MSDS sheet? The MSDS sheet is what each manufacturer has to, um, I guess they send it to OSHA. Um, and they, uh, it's exact, the exact ingredients of the product. So Amanda asked what the product was. Amanda, it is um, Mio's right here. I think you can see it. So water flavor enhancers. Yeah, Paul has that, the material safety data, data sheet. So I sent probably like, I don't know, 15 emails, you know, into Amazon saying, hey, look, this is a consumable product. People drink these. You know, how can they be hazmat? Um, and every answer that I've gotten is sorry. You know, according to the standards, uh, they are hazmat. So here's a little tip because I, I did a Google search because I knew I had to send in the MSDS uh, sheets on each product. And some of you probably know better sites on how to get those. Um, the site that I went to was msdsonline.com. So again, that, that site to get the MSDS sheets is msdsonline.com. And what that site allows you to do is you can download in PDF form five MSDS sheets. So if you have five products that you want MSDS sheets on, you can download five for free. So I needed 10, and what they do is like a lot of places, after you download five, then they want to charge you, I think it's like $150 a year. Um, so what I did is I just uh, switched computers. I have another computer that's on a, um, on a different uh, internet. So I went to that one, I created a new account, and then I was able to download five more. So if you're able to get to multiple computers, if you go to MSDS, online.com you can get um you know multiple msds sheets thank you rachel for posting that there so yeah so it's definitely an interesting experience for me um <laughs> the the painful part is i have uh about 600 to 650 dollars of meals that are in the warehouse already and you know amazon's telling me that they can't touch them they can't send it back, and so they have to call in another company to come in and to dispose of them. So, you know, who knows what they do with them? They probably sell them to somebody else who then sells them, you know, on some other site. But, uh, but I just, I, I wanted to do this precast just to make others aware that that can happen. I'm not upset about it. I know it's business. You know, Chris Green always says, you know, you can love Amazon. Amazon's not going to love you back. And, you know, that's totally true. Um, you can't be emotionally attached to it. The good thing is I've made a, a considerable amount of money off of meals. And the meals that I currently have are still selling, you know, very fast, merge and fulfilled. Um, so I'm happy about that. And for me, I'm looking at it as a learning experience um, because I know as I get deeper into selling on Amazon, I'm going to have a lot more products in there. And it's just going to help me um, before I buy something, before I go deep on something, to think, do I need to find the MSDS sheet on this first? Um, and should I send it in to Amazon first to get there okay? What's complicated about Amazon is, you know, like the emails that I've been sending, I've talked to probably 10 different, you know, seller reps and, you know, some of them say, well, yeah, man, you know what? It's, it's acid, but it's the same acid that's in orange juice. And so there's no way, you know, this should be hazmat. 
And then other reps are like, yeah, that's hazmat. Um, like any large organization, I guess that's what you run into. So, so that's it. If no one wants to come on air, I would love, you know, if anyone has any uh, hazmat stories um, or MSDS insight, uh, please turn your camera on and I'll bring you on. I'm not an extrovert. Uh, I'm, I'm very much an introvert. I like to have other people talk and while I listen. And so if there's anyone else that would like to come on, please join. Otherwise, uh, this is going to be a pretty short spreecast. I see Rachel say same thing happened to her. Ship the item in for a few months and then they change it to hazmat. Yeah, Greg, I actually tried to list it, um, you know, a number of different ways. And, uh, and it definitely, they, they basically shut it all down. Now, what should have been a clue to me is <clears throat> when I was looking, uh, when I just bought this last batch of meals, I saw that there wasn't a lot of FBA sellers. Now, here's the interesting thing. There were a few FBA sellers and a few different flavors. And so, um, you know, naturally, if you see right currently um sellers selling fba of the product that you're about to buy you know that's why i got really excited i was like yes jackpot you know i, I i've um <clears throat> i've found gold and so uh because there were a few sellers on it and um you know what's interesting and james says there's still a few uh, fba that are listed so you know i don't know i don't understand it uh, again, the reason why I'm doing this precast is I know all of you have a lot more knowledge than I do, having only done this for a year. Um, yeah, James, I agree. Eventually, I guess they'll, you know, they'll get them. And, you know, for whatever reason, uh, they just decided to uh, to make it hazmat. Yeah, the MSDS shows that it can cause uh, skin ir irritation from whatever that ingredient is. I mean, to be honest, when when you, when you look at those ingredients, just like a lot of things like crystal light, you know, or other artificial artificial sweeteners, I mean, some of that stuff is scary. Um, you know, I've heard that most doctors recommend to stay away from Equal and uh, and Splenda because uh, if you look at, you know, what, what it was made from, it actually, uh, it comes from, you know, stuff that's not too good for you. So I imagine the meals are, are the same thing. I was thinking maybe Jeff Beals, Bezos, you know, for some reason doesn't like, uh, doesn't like, yeah, a man that says, uh, check out, I can't even pronounce that, aspartame. Yeah, I know, I've heard that that is very, you know, it's not good for you. So apparently, um, either, <laughs> yeah, you who, <laughs> Oh, James, you're too funny. Apparently, whatever's a meal is uh, is not good for you, and it's not good for the Amazon warehouse because uh, they won't touch that stuff even if they have the rubber gloves on. I've never seen an email. I'll, I'll have to try to post the email they sent because it's it's funny. It reminds me of the uh, hazmat, you know, people in the movie Monsters, Inc., you know, basically the uh, seller or the rep is saying, look, we can't even touch this stuff. We have to call in another organization to come in and get it to remove it from our warehouse. But the funny thing is they've been selling, you know, uh, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of units, you know, of these meals for the past year. And, you know, I don't think it's harmed anybody, but uh, but suddenly now it is. So uh, another reason why I, I did this precast is because the last one I did, I was packing up the meals, you know, and I was talking about them. I got the meals at a discount grocery store. So, you know, like all items that we get, you make your money in the buy. I got these really cheap and, um, and I was really looking forward to making a good profit off of them. But, uh, but I just want to put out there, if you buy meals, you have to merchant fulfill them as far as um, now is concerned. So they're still a really good money maker if you can get them at a good price. Uh, but just know 
you're going to have to put in the work to a merchant fulfill them, which if you do eBay, it's not that bad. For me, I used to do eBay. So having a merchant fulfill these is just, it just seems to me like it's a lot more work. The profit margin is still good, but uh, to me, it just, it seems so much easier to be able to send it into FBA. So hopefully my lesson of losing $700 um, dealing with this issue, uh, other folks might be able to watch this and, and see it and, and maybe think twice if you're buying a product and you see that there's no FBA sellers, but there's a number of merchant fulfilled sellers, you might wanna stop and think, wait a second, can I send these into FBA? I know that there's been other products that I've bought, it's, it's been the same. Um, even, even if, say you sent these products in the past with no, no problem, but now you, you find another, you know, uh, another load of them, and, but then you notice there's not a lot of FBA sellers, that might be uh, red flags that you can no longer send them in.